In this video, I'd like to explain what a Linux distribution is and why there are different Linux distributions. A Linux distribution is simply an installable operating system built from the Linux kernel and the supporting user programs and libraries that are needed to assemble a complete system. You see, Linux isn't developed by a single organization, but by a large community of open source projects. Um, a collection of different communities might even be a better way of putting it, each working with individual software components. So what a distribution, sometimes called a distro for short, um, what a distribution does is it provides an easy way for end users to install and manage a working Linux system. When Linux was originally developed, distributions didn't exist. So the early developers, they'd download a kernel from kernel.org, they'd use various complicated tools to compile it, install it on a system, compile the individual pieces they needed, download it from the um, FTP sites or websites of the different, um, different software developer communities, and they'd have to assemble those all by hand. That was actually rather difficult to do. So very quickly the developers figured out that it would be useful to provide what they called a distribution of tools that new developers and new users could use to quickly set up Linux systems. Um, it very rapidly turned out there wasn't going to be just one Linux distribution because there were many different use cases and people wanted different sets of tools for different purposes. And so to this day, many different Linux distributions exist, each with different goals and criteria for selecting and supporting the software that's included in the operating system. A distribution will generally consist of at least a Linux kernel and some supporting user space programs. Now this could be very minimal. Um, for example, for a simple um, phone application or something, you might not have a normal, complete user space there. Or it could consist of thousands of open source packages and applications, um, pop, um, generally not all installed at once, but available for installation. So the distribution vendor has to act as a curator, selecting which programs and which versions of those programs they want to include and support. They have to provide some way to easily install and update that software. And ideally, they need to provide some way to support that software. Um, they should be involved in the community that's developing those programs upstream if they want to be really effective at that. So the role of a distribution vendor is to look at the million plus open source projects that are out there, be involved with them, or at least be involved with the ones that they're distributing, integrate them into their products and then make sure that they are sufficiently stabilized for their customer base. And this is the basic model that Red Hat uses when uh, putting together our, the distributions that we're involved with. I'm going to take a look at two distributions actually today that Red Hat's involved with, and so we can compare and contrast two different approaches. One, Fedora, and the other, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So the first of these distributions I'll look at is Fedora. And Fedora is a community-driven Linux distribution. While Red Hat's a primary sponsor of this distribution, uh, its direction is very much driven by the participating community, the people who are interested in helping to develop this um, fast-moving distribution. Red Hat's interest in Fedora is that it provides a way for us to do that second step, that initial integration to select things that look interesting from the million packages that are out there and start getting them integrated and tested and played with and experimented with by the community to see which ones people are interested in, which ones are successful. But Red Hat doesn't direct the, the Fedora project. There's two main bodies that currently manage the project. The Fedora Council, which is a mix of both Red Hat representatives and community selected representatives that plan the high level project goals and manage the finances. And then there's the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee FESCO, and their job is to actually make technical decisions for the direction for the distribution, so select which packages they should include, determine architectural changes the distribution wants to make, um, handling oversight of the maintainers that are volunteering to assist with the project. And that latter community is entirely selected by the community. The result is that Fedora is a stable and secure Linux distribution focused on new, free, open source technology. Their focus, though, is different than what a 
a commercial organization might want for the long term because they're focused on innovation, they're focused on excellence, and they're focused on trying new things, but they're not focused on long-term stability. They do a major update of the distribution every six months, and after a year, their, old, um, their oldest version stops being supported. Two major updates and they're done. Um, so this, isn't going, this has an advantage for the community. It provides a solid distribution for developing new technologies before they're used in the enterprise. And it's an advantage for Red Hat because it's a place for us to integrate and improve that new technology before it goes into a commercially long-term supported project. But for an organization that, that's trying to pres, um, support a server for a long period of time, Fedora might not be the ideal choice. When we get to the stabilization phase, Red Hat looks at what's been going on in Fedora, and from that baseline, we develop Red Hat Enterprise Linux, our commercially supported Linux distribution. This isn't just a collection of mature and well-tested open source projects. This is an integrated, complete, enterprise-ready project. Um, and long-term support is an important feature of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat supports versions of this distribution for 10 years from the initial release of a new major version. Um, we stay on particular ver software versions in general, but backport fixes or new features over the lifetime of Red Hat Enterprise Linux in order to continue to support, um, support the solution and keep it stable over the long term. We do base Red Hat Enterprise Linux in Fedora, but we pick and choose which packages we're going to support for the long time. We don't include everything Fedora includes. And sometimes we make further enhancements beyond what Fedora has done. When we do, we pass those enhancements back to upstream and to Fedora so that they can adopt them as well in the true open source spirit. This allows us also to make configuration decisions in Red Hat Enterprise Linux that serve the needs of our customers, which might be different from the needs of those of people using the Fedora project. So there's a number of ways this all fits in with the community. Customers can engage with Red Hat to determine the needs of the next release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Vendors can engage with us to make sure their hardware and software is well supported in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then we can help the changes that are needed happen in the open source community, happen upstream, get back to um, the community so that not only can we support those for the long term, but those changes can be shared by everybody who's working with various Linux distributions. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is interesting commercially because it's based on subscription support. It's open source. You're not paying for the software license. You're paying for expertise and commitment, assistance with the software, engagement and support when you need it. When new versions become available, you can go ahead and move to the new version when you're ready without paying more. That's part of the subscription. If you're on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, at some point Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 comes out and you're ready to change that server to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, you're not going to be coming back to us and saying, I need to pay for a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 license. You're Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 license can move straight to 8 without any further changes. And these are just some of the advantages that Red Hat Enterprise Linux provides through this subscription-based model. So we can see that there's different ways that distributions engage with their communities. There's different ways that they provide support. There's different advantages and disadvantages that they have. But this distribution model has proven to be so powerful, and especially this two-phase model where we have open integration before providing a commercially supported product, that it's used beyond the core Linux operating system. And we use this model to help test and solidify and support many products by working with the upstream community and then integrating that into um, products that can be supported commercially for the long term. That concludes this topic. See you at the next video.